All right. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Let's get into this week's partnered event. Uh, right off the bat, do me a favor. Uh, go ahead and type a Y in the chat if my audio is coming through and if you are seeing this uh, intro slide right here. All right. Thank you, Kirk. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Looks like everyone can hear me and see the screen. And make sure you guys use the chat to ask any questions throughout the webinar, and we'll get to those throughout and after the presentation. So I see we have a, uh, a lot of regulars here. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, for those of you that are checking us out for the first time, welcome. My name's Ty. I'm one of the guys here at Shark Indicators. I've been with the company for a few years now, and what we do is specialize in automated trade management and strategy development for non-programmers, right? So we build real tools for everyday traders, and on top of our live weekly workshops, we also bring in high-quality partners like Phil uh, to show them in action with their own strategies and tools. We've been doing this for over six years now in the NinjaTrader ecosystem, and we aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, here you see some words from a few of our users. Feel free to check those out and the others at sharkindicators.com slash testimonials. Real quick, let's take a uh, look at the risk disclosure. Take a minute and look this over. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. So let's dive into today's topic, which is focused around developing and executing your own automated trading system with Phil from Lucrum Trading Systems. So just a bit about Phil, he is a full-time technical trader, as well as the founder and manager of both Primario Capital and Lucrum Trading Systems. He specializes in quantitative analysis and algorithmic trading, which obviously makes him an ideal presenter for this shark audience. So uh, let's just get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic and the screen uh, over to you, Phil. Perfect. Thank you, Chai. No right, problem. My see my screen here. Uh, yep, it's coming through crystal clear. All right, perfect. Well, again, thank you very much. Special thank you to Shark Indicators for hosting this event for me. And thank you all for attending. So a quick recap about myself. My name is Phil Antonson. I am a trader of over 10 years. Uh, I was a hedge fund analyst and trader that specialized in the metals and energy sectors. And I went to the University of Wisconsin for finance and economics. I'm the founder and manager at Primario Capital Asset Management Company. And I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. And a little bit about Lucrum Trading Systems is that as a provider of both discretionary and automatic trading tools for NinjaTrader 7 and 8, as well as a trading education and system development consulting company. We are objectively oriented to providing our customers with the resources and tools necessary to empower profitable trading. So today what we'll cover is a snapshot of Lucrum Ruby, which is uh, our featured system, and some of its functions and what it can do for you in your trading. We're gonna look at the usable outputs of Ruby using Bloodhound. And then we're gonna be building a basic strategy using Bloodhound and Ruby using those outputs. We'll then be integrating Bloodhound, or the Bloodhound strategy that we create with Blackbird. And then we'll quickly go over some of the additional services of Lucum Trading Systems. And then at the end of the presentation, one attendee will win a free license of the Ruby system. So at the end of the webinar, we'll go ahead and do a random number draw uh, based on how many, or how many uh, attendees we have and select at random. So now let's go over Ruby. So we're going to go and load up. Let's pull up a e-mini chart. Let's do a 15 minute and load up 30 days. All right, so here we have, you know, obviously the standard chart and we're gonna go and apply Ruby simply by going into the indicator panel, selecting LTS Ruby, and we're gonna keep everything on the default settings for now and click apply. So immediately you can see the transformation from what you'd expect from the normal red and green open high low close chart where you have a lot more visually oriented <clears throat> and uniform uh, charting and with that we have the color coded bars as seen <clears throat> throughout the chart we have the green for a rise in price and uh, more violet for a decline in price and these gray bars scattered throughout which are the 
what I call more intermediary bars or uh, uh, reversal bars. And those are going to be where there is not a lot of price action going on, uh, sometimes sideways movement where there's not much momentum and will generally be a, a precursor to when the, the trend of the price is going to reverse. So it's <clears throat> you know handy to keep a look at for when there could be an exhaustion of a run or there could be a potential reversal going on. Uh, next we have the trade trigger signals. And those are these, we've got a green arrow here, we've got a red arrow here, red arrow here. These are the trade trigger signals. <clears throat> and these are the predominant factor in when the system has calculated that there is a likelihood of price continuing in that direction at that point. So these uh, signals will be generated throughout the chart and will be a precursor to when the system expects there to be a continuation in that direction. <clears throat> we also have the extended trade trigger signals. Let's see if I can find one on the chart here. Okay, here's one. So these are yellow and are going to be a, the signal is calculating that it is a continuation of the initial signal. So we have an initial signal located here and it's saying that the system expects a continuation of price moving beyond that point. And of course you can even use that as something that you can use to scale into a position or even do take profits from because it's going to be an extension of the initial trade trigger signal. Um, they're also used as, as potential spots of exhaust, exhaustion. So say so you have a trade and a extended signal develops after a significant run, it could be exhausted and you could look to maybe pull out of your position or scale out of it. And next we have some pattern identification tools. Uh, we have one here on the screen here is an ascending triangle. Uh, the formation is based off of the pivot points and the deviation uh, range that these pivot points are made off of to form these patterns. And we have an indication of the implied breakout direction of the pattern uh, with the color. So the ascending triangle pattern is an implied breakout range to the upside. So it's going to be green. And I think here's an ascending channel with the implied breakout range being below. And a couple other things. We have the exponential moving average, which is a simple EMA, uh, slow moving EMA that is color coded and it gives you a little bit of an idea what the slope is and what the momentum is going in with the EMA itself. So this is going to be a little bit handy for using it as to as a filter for when you're creating your automated system. You could potentially couple the slope of the EMA or the color of the EMA even into deciding when you want to get into a trade into which direction. With that, we also have the MMA, which is a modified moving average, which is a linear regression moving average. It's a very fast moving average that quickly responds to the fluctuation in price. It's, it's the uh, fastest way to do a moving average is to do that linear regression. And it's a little bit more uh, predictive in ways based on the momentum of price in the nearest term. And last for the features we're going to cover quick is the Fibonacci uh, extensions that are developed also from the, uh, the range pivots that are formed. And these are going to paint themselves on these pivot points and extend a range of Fibonacci sequence numbers. And these are very handy to look at because they are going to give you a sense of uh, potential support and resistance levels and points of contention, um, you know, could be potentially useful if you are keen as a Fibonacci trader. All right, so that goes into some of the, the quick features of Ruby. Now we're just going to go into a little bit of the customization and how you can tweak this, this system to be a little bit more of your own. So the first thing we're going to go over is the trend sensitivity value. This is a numerical value, generally between uh, 2 and 
200 really, uh, that'll adjust the way the system responds to the fluctuation of momentum of the price. By default, it is an 18, and we're gonna go ahead and just for this example, we're gonna crank it up to 50. So I'm gonna go ahead and type 50 in here. And then now as I click apply, you can see the change in, in how it responds. Now there's gonna be a lot more of a continual progression of the solid colors in the charting. And there's gonna be a lot less of the gray bars and reversal bars than if you were to have a lower value. So if you're more of a long-term trader that you know, looks to get into a position and wants to see it through, even with a little bit of, of uh, downside, a little bit of dry down intra-trade, you can use a higher value to sit in a trade, wait things out until the uh, trade completes and the trend has made its full run. And just on the, the flip side, we can do a trend sensitivity of five. So here you can see that there's going to be a lot more of these gray bars, a lot more of the uh, transitions between the violet and the green, simply because the system is going to respond to the fluctuation of price a lot more, um, I guess, with a lot less momentum required. So here we have a lot more of these intermediary bars and a lot quicker uh, changes between the bars and the bar colors. And this will be particularly uh, impactful for, for traders that are looking to do uh, very short-term trading on a lower time frame. Uh, somebody who might not have a full day to commit to trading but just wants to you know, plug away at a few trades over a span of a couple hours. You can do a, a low time frame with a uh, lower trend sensitivity and get some pretty quick trades uh, going on, you know, get a couple ticks here and there for, for a couple quick trades and call it a day. All right, now we're gonna go, let's bring this back to 18. And now we have the trade trigger sensitivity. Now this is gonna operate very similarly to the trend sensitivity. It is going to uh, judge how much influence is needed in momentum of price before it's going to trigger that trade trigger signal. So for example's sake, let's go ahead and crank this one up to 50. And you're gonna see that there are going to be a lot fewer signals and the signals are going to be a little bit more delayed. So the system requires a little bit more information as to where the price is moving or what has moved in order to generate those signals. And just like that, we have, let's do a five. And here we're gonna see a lot more signals generated. So these are gonna be, require less information or a little bit less momentum moving forward to generate these signals. So we have a lot more signals and a couple more of these uh, extended trade signals being generated. All right, so moving on, we are going to go over the counter threshold and some of the pattern identification that uh, I briefly went over. So that's gonna be this value right here, counter thresh. It is going to be the value for the deviation of price before these pivot points form. So by default, it's five. But if you move it up, you can see that these pivot points are going to be a, a lot less. Let's see if I can find a pattern here. There's a rising wedge up here. So it's going to have a lot more deviation in the ranges of price before these are generated. And the rising wedge here formed is going to be basically what it's looking at is these points over the course of the last three or four values will paint the pattern and depending on what the range of that pattern is, will depict the, uh, the formation that it sees. Now we can go ahead 
and change that to a lower value, and we're going to see a lot more of those going on, is because the deviation in price range is going to be a lot more rapid. So we're going to have a lot more of these uh, these pivot points following where the, uh, the highs and lows of the recent values have been. So here we have you know a lot more patterns formed. So that's going to be a very dependent on what your trading style is per se. If you're looking to have uh, again some relatively quick trades, you can have this more sensitive. If you're looking for a little bit longer holding periods, you can raise it a little bit. And then of course everything is customizable with the colors and stuff like that. You can turn a bunch of things on or off if you want something a little bit less cluttered. So here you can go ahead and, and change out the range pivots to false. If you want to keep it very simple and just leave it with the simple trade trigger signals and colors. And next, which is included with, with Ruby is the Vision Renko bar type. And the Vision Renko bar type is a little bit special as a Renko bar because it operates a little bit differently than your traditional Renko bar would. And the key difference that makes it uh, more of a true Renko bar is that it has a tick offset and a double bar offset for the reversals. Um, and this is gonna be a truer depiction of how a Renko bar should work. Uh, I don't know if many of you guys have tried to create any type of automated system using the standard Renko bar, but the the back tests and uh, even if you're live trading with Renko will not be accurate to what you would expect in a live trading situation simply because it operates with hindsight bias and it anticipates that you would be able to execute and enter a trade at the exact value that that bar closed at. So with the Vision Renko, there is going to be a one tick offset because realistically for a bar to close, it must exceed the threshold of that bar size by one. And by having it exceed it by one, it's going to form the next bar at that, you know, one tick higher value. So with that, you have a Renko that is more true for both live trading and simulating back tests. So if you want to operate a uh, Renko based system, you know, I'd highly suggest using the Vision Renko bar type because it is going to be the most accurate representation for both back testing and live testing or live trading. And it will also operate under tick level data. So if there is not seamless, seamless data or seamless prices between the bars, there will be gaps and differences that the standard Renko would not have. All right, I think I sped through that quick enough. So that was just a quick rundown of Ruby, some of the, uh, the parameters and, and functions you can do to customize it. And now we're going to go into Bloodhound and work through some of the outputs that are accessible to you and allow you to quickly make a uh, automated system. So here we're just going to revert the values back to default. I think it was this. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put on shark indicators, bloodhound. All right, so here we have the LTS Ruby template, and this will be provided uh, if you don't already have it or are going to purchase. This will be provided to you. Let's quick refresh here. And we have our template. And this template is all of the generic outputs for Ruby. So this is going to be things like the bar direction up or down. So here you can see that all of the cream bars are highlighted green and all the violet bars are highlighted red. So this is just a generic is the bar going up or is it going down? Here we have the modified moving average, the linear regression moving average, and this is going to be the color coordinated. So if it's going up, green, if it's going down, red, simple as that. 
Next, we have the entry trade signals. And this, it's worth noting that this is with all of the different outputs accessible in Bloodhound. It is very important to make sure that the indicator values that you're using on your chart are the same that are in your template. So right now, we're just going to look at the entry trade signals. We have our indicator here. Go ahead and click those, those options and make sure that the options here are the exact same that are found on your chart. And this is to make sure that they line up properly. This is to ensure that your system is working as it is intended to. So if, if you were to change, let's see, trade trigger signals to five, they're not lined up anymore, simply because the system is reading something differently in Bloodhound than it is on your chart. So to make sure that these line up, just go ahead and, and keep it at the default. Moving on, we have the extended trade signals, and these are going to be the yellow ones. We have the MMA slope, so this is going to be a little bit different than the MMA direction. The MMA direction is going to be a value output based on the colors of the MMA, not necessarily the slope. So here's the slope, and similar to the MMA slope, we've got the EMA slope. And ATR, this is not visible on it because I turned it off, but the ATR is just a simple ATR, average true range indicator that uh, depicts whether the price is below or above the ATR, and that's what this value is right here. Uh, next is the pivot reversals. These are going to be where the pivot points were, were painted, that this is when any change in those pivot reversals was modified, whether it closed or went up or down, is that value here. And next we have the price above or below the Fibonacci it wasn't painted. So here I, just, I can do this just so you guys can see it. I have them turned off. All right, so. So here we've got the price, whether it's above or below the 50% Fibonacci comparison. And as the chart goes on, you can see that when the price crosses above or below it, as it generates, it will create those different signals. Here simply is the uh, neutral bar direction, which is the gray bars. And that is it for the, uh, the, the solvers that we have. So again, these are very generic solvers. They're all very customizable. Uh, by going in and changing some of these values, whether or not them to have full weight, partial weight, um, currently through the template they have full weight. So a yes is one and no is zero, basically. Um, you can have anything in between that for the weight, weightedness, but the thresholds are set in place. All right, so now we're going to move into some logic to create our very simple system. So what's nice about Bloodhound is the fact that you are able to rapidly theorize a system and create it in a matter of minutes. You know, people have a lot of ideas of different trading systems. You know, they might go and if they want to code it themselves, they can. Um, it's very time consuming. And if you want to make some adjustments to it, it is also going to be more time intensive than if you were to use something like this. Also, if you don't have programming knowledge, you would then hire somebody to program it for you, which is arguably more time consuming and is also sometimes expensive. 
So with this, you can have an idea, you can put it down in this logic matrix and have it out and tested in minutes. So here we're just gonna pull up the March webinar entry. So this is as simple as it gets. So we have the entry trade signal and here we have all of our entry signals all lined up and good. And what we're gonna do is say, well, this is this is more of just an uptrending market. The EMA is saying that there's a continual upward slope, so it wouldn't make much sense to take some of these short trades here, simply because the trend is already moving in the long, long direction. So then we can go ahead and say, and, and we want, take one of our existing solvers and use our EMA slope. So here we go, entry trade signal, EMA slope, and plug it in. So now these shorts are no longer here. We filter them out because we had a predominantly long trending market because of the EMA filter. So that is, that is our entry condition. I mean, that's took about two minutes. And then we can just figure out what we want for our edge exit logic. So let's just start from here. We've got the extended trade signal. This is our exit condition number one. This is saying that we already made an entry here, actually, no, this, is a, this wouldn't have triggered because it wasn't in the uh, upper trending EMA. But if it were to hit an extended signal, it would close the trade, saying, OK, the trend has moved on. We've made some profit. Let's close out. So that is our condition one for an exit. Now let's try doing the reversal entry signal. So this is saying, Whenever we have another entry signal, say we're in a long position and it meets a short position, it is going to exit the trade. So we're going to say, or, so we have our extended, or the entry resulting in the trade. And then our third one that we're just going to try out is the neutral bar. The neutral bar is going to be these gray bars saying that, okay, the, the trend may be reversing. Uh, it's pulling back a little bit and a gray bar, gray bar formed. Let's go ahead and exit there. So we can just go ahead and throw that up in OR and put it in. So these are just showing all of our potential exit conditions. And this is going to couple as our uh, stop loss and take profit situations because of how this is set up. The stop loss is going to automatically be generated because of a gray bar. If you have a green bar for the entry and order it for it to go into a violet bar or any significant reversal, it would end up being gray. So that would hit the neutral bar condition to exit. So moving into the Blackbird software, we're going to go ahead and do a new strategy analyzer. And let's see what we were working with, which was uh, an ES continuous contract. And select your shark indicators Blackbird. Go ahead and click this for the options. And here we pull up the the uh, interface for Blackbird. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about Blackbird, um, but it's an extremely powerful software piece that really takes it to the next level of taking Bloodhound and allowing you to backtest and live run your systems. So we're going to pull up our template, the LTS Ruby template, and we are going to select our entry signal template, which is the March webinar entry, and then use our exit signal template, which is the March webinar exit. 
and we can leave everything the same. Threshold for long is going to be 0.8, and short threshold is 0.8 as well. So here we can set profit targets. However, with the way our exit conditions are set, they couple as it both take profit and stop loss. So we're going to not use these. However, you know, depending on what system you're developing, you certainly can. Uh, some of the other stuff you can set up uh, scheduling. So if you want it to run for a certain couple hours of the day, maybe in the morning, you can set it up to uh, run a specific time. And if it get signals during that time, it'll trigger. If not, they will be void. So we're going to go ahead and keep that and go ahead and back test. So we had a 15-minute chart. Uh, we got this going back five, about five and a half months. And just click Run. All right, so here is the results of our very rudimentary system. And, you know, these numbers do look pretty good. A profit factor of 2.19 is, is quite impressive. However, this is not something you're just going to want to go ahead and say, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. There's a $14,000 net profit over the course of five months. Let's throw more contracts at it, and we're golden. You know, not necessarily true. You know, there's a lot of things to keep in mind as to the repeatability and how to make this robust. You know, this is just using default settings for using, you know, pretty much as simple as simple gets. And we're going to look at the, uh, the graph, as you can see, pretty stagnant. Most of the wins were coming from a few very large winners. But we want to look at the chart and make sure that the system was operating under the conditions that we were looking for. So let's just go back to this one and look at this chart with our entry logic, exit logic. All right, so we had the signal formed here, which would mean that the next possible place for this trade to be placed is the entry of that next bar. Close this guy out. And that's exactly what it did. It found that entry, executed the market order at the open of that bar, and closed right after that red bar, which, if you look back, was a gray bar stop out. So it got stopped out because of our gray bar condition. So that's good. That means that, you know, this is obviously just one example of the trades, but it just lets you make sure that you're system is working under the constraints that you provided for it in your logic matrix. So now that we see that it's good, we can go through to the rest of the chart and see what was going on with it. And uh, you know, obviously there's a number of losing trades here. And we would want to go back to the drawing board and say, OK, what could we have done differently in our system? What could we have added or potentially removed from the system that would capitalize more on this and had maybe exit out quicker so it didn't pull back that hard to uh, make a small loser. What could we do here to have it stop out maybe a little bit, uh, you know, capture this better? And there's a whole lot of different things to do, but you want to make sure that the foundation of the system and the core concept is solid before you get into too much detail. When you get into too much detail with too many conditions, you run the gambit of being curve fit and optimized uh, too perfectly for the information, the data that you have available to you. You know, if you have uh, unlimited amount of data to curve fit, you could run into some issues. You know, it's best to work in a sort of a double blind situation where you build and test and, and pseudo optimize in a narrow uh, vision of data and then, then expand that window of data to further. Uh, you know, test your system and confirm reliability and relative robustness. All right. So that is a, I guess, a quick recap of, you know, very, very basic system development. You know, this is something that, like I said, 
you can create in just a couple minutes. And this is not at all optimized. It is just something that is using the default values, using a very simple filtering mechanism and using those uh, as an output to trigger those trades. All right. So we did that, we did the overview, we built the basic system, and let's just go over a couple other uh, products and services that Lucrum Trading System offers. So we have our discretionary trading systems, which includes the Ruby system, which was initially built, built as a discretionary trading system for myself that grew in popularity as people have seen it and thus uh, became for sale through, through Lucrum. Uh, some trading indicators and bar types, such as the Vision Renko bar type. They do some automated system consulting, which is basically analyzing a system that you've developed or theorized and consult on the ability to replicate that and confirm robustness and reliability as the system moves forward. Also, do system training and general trading education. Uh, you know, if you're new to trading, and you're looking for somebody with a little bit of experience in that realm, uh, you know, can schedule a block of time to go over any uh, questions or ideas or just, you know, anything regarding trading in that sense. Uh, last, do system theory and application. Again, that comes down to if you have an idea how we can take your theory into applying something logical to it and creating, you know, something like that Bloodhound Gateway or Logic Matrix into something that is actionable. So I don't do any uh, actual software programming anymore. So if you have a specific request uh, for developing a, a system, I unfortunately do not do that. I can refer you to some excellent people that do, but I do not personally. So it's just a quick recap, uh, trading system consulting, uh, just measuring the robustness and curve fitting inefficiencies that might exist. Uh, so you developed a system you optimized it, just making sure that it's not uh, curve fit and has any inefficiencies in its execution uh, through the accuracy of both live performance and back testing. A lot of times people, especially with Renko charting, will have these phenomenal results in their back testing, but then once they go live with it or pseudo live, they notice that there's a lot of inefficiencies in the back test and the live test, and that's due to the hindsight knowledge that a traditional Renko bar has. So what's included with Ruby? Uh, you, of course, get the Ruby system for both NinjaTrader 7 and 8. This is a lifetime license with a transferable machine ID. So if you purchase it for one machine ID, you change computers, or you want to move it to another computer that is always free of charge. Uh, Vision Renko bar type is included with it. It is also uh, available separately if you're just looking for a custom bar type. Comes with a comprehensive use and training manual. And of course, free updates and free support. And that is $395. And to our attendees here, we have the special offer of adding up to one hour of basic Ruby setup and consulting. Uh, that is basically making sure that your objectives and your trading style are accurately represented with Ruby. And that's by going through some of your settings within Ruby, identifying the markets that you're trading, and just getting that sort of uh, rounded out that's best for you. Um, I think a lot of this also comes down to analyzing it yourself and what works best for you, but I can certainly assist in that. So you get one, up to one hour of that for anybody that purchased it uh, from this webinar. And then we also have a bundle offer with some of the Shark Indicators software that includes both Bloodhound Ultimate and Blackbird. So here we have a couple of discount prices with them coupled. And I will provide a link to that. Here, let me just pull it up quick. All 
All right. So that should be in the chat here. So considerable savings, uh, especially with Ruby and Blackbird, you know, your savings pretty much outweigh the cost of Ruby itself. So if you're in the market for Blackbird, you know, definitely consider something like that. And now we are going to go into the winner of the free Ruby system. So I've got here a random number generator. It looks like we've got 56 people in attendance right now. So we're going to go ahead and generate 39. So this might take a little bit, but I'm going to try and... Fine. All right, we've got uh, Richard Bachelor. So Richard Bachelor, congratulations. Uh, if you want to go ahead and shoot me a question in the uh, in the GoTo meeting or GoTo webinar thing here, uh, give me your email, and I will be sure to get that out to you. All right. So going on uh, questions, I will pull up the questions dialog box here. So if anybody has any questions. Oh, I got quite a few questions here. I apologize for that. I didn't even see them. And Phil, uh, you know, take your time answering these questions, man. No rush at all. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Uh, let me just go over some of the first ones. I hope you guys are still here. Uh, what time zone are you, am I in for these charts? Uh, I am located on the East Coast, so they are all uh, Eastern Standard Time Zone. And Jeff Stewart, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just went over that. Uh, all the indicators that I showed, which is all Ruby, uh, they all work with Bloodhound. So all the outputs, all of the different components within Ruby are all accessible with Bloodhound. Uh, again, Jeff asked, does the system work with NinjaTrader 8? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They, uh, Ruby, as recently as of the uh, last couple months, have been available for uh, NinjaTrader 8. So even if you are an existing uh, user of Ruby for NinjaTrader 7, uh, you can go ahead and send me an email saying, hey, I'd like the NinjaTrader 8 version. I tried to get a, a mass email out with it, but sometimes uh, some people might get missed. So I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, it does work for NinjaTrader 8. Uh, James Heyer asked, is Blackbird included with Bloodhound? Uh, no, it is a separate product. Um, you can use Bloodhound and work with their Raven uh, system, which is a very, uh, very lesser version of, of Blackbird, but it is enough that you could function with it to, to backtest uh, automated systems with. Uh, Rick asked, uh, do I have any information, informational uh, training sessions? I don't do any group training sessions. Uh, I can do some one-on-one -on -one ones. And like I mentioned later on in the webinar, that uh, purchasers of Ruby will be entitled to up to one hour of free training and consulting with Ruby. And one hour is more than ample enough to uh, get you situated. Uh, David Gresson's asked, is it possible to share the Bloodhound templates? I went through it so fast, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, yeah, absolutely, I can I can go ahead and, and send those templates to you. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and send me an email, I'll have my email up right there. So you can go ahead and request those there and I'll be happy to send them to you.
Uh, James, if you have some systems you'd like to get some feedback on, absolutely send me an email and we can schedule that. Uh, wait, S, for automated trading, do your bar types have an automatic one tick offset entry? Uh, for the Vision Renko, yes, they do. Um, the Renko bar type is the only one that's really uh, necessary to have that offset simply because they're non-time denominated. They're simply price action bars. Uh, when you have a standard uh, minute bar, the offset uh, is not necessarily needed. Uh, Cat B, is this being recorded? Yeah, absolutely. If you registered for this presentation, you will uh, certainly receive a recording of this. Uh, usually it's within uh, one or two days. It's usually pretty quick, so you can keep an eye out for that. Yeah, guys, that recording link will be sent out uh, tomorrow morning at the latest. So just check whatever email you uh, registered with, and uh, yeah, the replay link will always be sent the following day. Can you show how CL looks? Uh, sure. Let's see, make sure. I... So somebody asked to see how it looks on CL. So I didn't specify what time frame. So we can just load up a sort of 20 days of CL. And so default settings like that. Well, it's a bit, bit sporadic as of recently. Um, some couple good runs there. Um, again, using default settings, so it's not at all really optimized for any specific market. Um, see how there's. There's that. Uh, Raven does come with Bloodhound, James, yes. Uh, when was the latest version for NT7 released? Uh, that would be approximately a month and a half ago. Uh, the changes to Ruby and the updates are a little bit more quality of life ones. They're not, n at no way am I going to change the, the inner components of the system because they have been proven to be very solid. Um, so it's just a little bit of quality of life things, um, such as some people like using this uh, software with a darker background and they had a hard time seeing some of the different things. So I added adjustments for text colors and stuff like that. So simple things like that. Um, if you're looking for that type of update, uh, please feel free to email me. I'll be sure to get over that. Uh, Robert S, can you put alarms in the buy and sell signals? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, actually by default has an audible alert. So you can change this for a few different ones. But uh, so yeah, whenever a uh, trade trigger signal is generated, it makes a chime, sounds more like a doorbell. So if you have you know tons of different uh, charts open, uh, it's a quick way to identify that. Uh, do I recommend using candlesticks over wrinkle bars in live environment? Uh, it's personal preference uh, for a lot of my uh, discretionary trading. So something pretty much exactly like this. I'll have a 15 minute chart up with basically the default settings. And I'll use a Renko bar mostly for referencing. But most of my trading is done uh, on minute. But, you know, it's it's very personal preference. I wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other. Um, Michael Hines asked, can I use Ruby with Bloodhound to create a fully automated NT8 script? Um, I know they're working on Bloodhound for NinjaTrader 8 uh, currently. And when that exact release date is, I am not sure yet. But uh, currently right now with Bloodhound and Blackbird, uh, this will be predominantly for NinjaTrader 7. However, I'm sure that once it rolls into NinjaTrader 8, a lot of the same stuff that you used would be uh, transferable in some way. 
Mm -hmm. And just to answer um, those questions, guys, Bloodhound and Blackbird, uh, the pre-beta release for NTA um, is in a testing stage right now with, with several traders. Um, if you guys already own Bloodhound or Blackbird, just reach out to support at sharkindicators.com and let them know that you want to get on the NTA beta as well. All right, thank you. All right, let's do a couple couple more questions as they're coming in. Uh, what settings do I have for the patterns to appear? Uh, that is going to be entirely dependent on the counter threshold. So when you have, oh, the, uh, the range pivots also must be on. So those will impact uh, how those patterns are, are identified. So make sure that um, this value, if it's higher, the chance of the patterns forming are going to be less. If it's lower, they'll be more likely, but they'll be a lot you know, more frequent. The validity of them could be compromised with a too low of number. So just make sure that you play around with the counter thresh and have your range pivots onto true. Uh, will we need to buy uh, Shark Indicators Bloodhound separately to automate the strategy? Yes, at this that state um, and really any future state, it would require uh, Bloodhound to automate in that sense, like I have shown. Um, you know, the outputs are still accessible. So if you wanted to hard code it yourself, it's possible. However, uh, you know, definitely to save yourself a handful of time, it's probably just easier to use uh, Bloodhound for that case. But as itself, Ruby itself knows it is not an automated system. Uh, and then James, can you tell us what markets have I found Ruby best suited for? Um, it's a pretty hard question. I don't think there is a specific market that I would deem to be the absolute best. Um, some of the more sway moving markets like uh, CL is an exa ex excellent example of one, uh, you know, with an underlying asset rather than some of the indexes, which could be a little bit more sporadic. Um, Ruby is still predominantly a more momentum based system. So when you have a whole lot of chop, uh, it won't be nearly as effective, but uh, in terms of having markets that straight up don't work with it, uh, there really isn't one to have one that works extremely well. Again, there really isn't one. It just generally works well across uh, virtually every market and time frame that I've thrown at it. Uh, Kirk asks, does the Bloodhound template come with a purchase? Uh, yes, yes, the template that I showed in this this webinar will be available and I can also include the, the uh, uh, you know, the logic matrix that we did for that, that quick automated system. All right, I think I covered everybody's question. If anybody has any any last minute ones, uh, feel free to take them in. I try to get to them before the end. Uh, otherwise, again, feel free to uh, send me an email. So my email is phil at lucrumtradingsystems.com or you can call me at 602-888-3006 uh, for any further questions or inquiries, support, what have you. So, all right. I think that wraps it up. Uh, thank you all very much for joining me today. Uh, I really appreciate your time and hope you guys could learn something, whether you already have Ruby or looking to purchase Ruby or any of the Shark Indicator products. So, again, Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great upcoming weekend. Awesome. Hey, thanks again, Phil. Uh, great presentation, man. Really smooth. Uh, everyone here, um, anyone who tuned in late, we are recording this. Um, so just check your inbox tomorrow for the uh, webinar replay. Uh, if you have any questions specifically for Phil, shoot him an email at phil at lucrumtradingsystems.com. And any questions uh, specifically for Shark, Send that to support at sharkindicators.com. Uh, thanks again, Phil, and thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, everyone have a great you. night. Thanks.